like everybody else, due to COVID, we were locked down for months and months. So as soon as it was possible in Scotland to travel again, we headed for Tyree, the Isle of Tyree. Yippee! Tyree is the most westerly island in the Inner Hebrides off the west coast of Scotland. To get to it, we took the ferry from Oban. The Calmac ferries leave from Oban for Tyree every day, and in summer, twice a day on Saturdays. Oban is the main hub for ferries to many of the islands. It takes just under four hours to get to Tyree, and you briefly stop at Col on the way. We took the Tuesday sailing, which left at three in the afternoon, so that we didn't have to get up at the crack of dawn. The ferry wasn't too busy at all. It's a fancy number plate on the uh, Discovery. Passengers have a sign, stay with the dogs. Bye. Bye. So reminded that we only accept 20 cars at this time. Thank you. The ferry goes across the Firth of Lorne and then up the Sound of Mull. If it's clear, you can see Dewitt Castle, the home of the Maclean clan on the Isle of Mull. And further up the Sound, you can look across to Tobermory. Then it heads southwest, and for a while you get a feeling of the, of the open sea. This is the island of Col, home to just under 200 people. It looked quite bleak in the mist. This is Scaranish, the main village on Tyree. There's a well-stocked co-op shop and a hotel. About 600 people live on Tyree, mostly spread throughout the island. Tyree is supposed to be one of the sunniest places in the UK, so what was it doing raining when we arrived? It was too wet to go out much on our first day, so we watched the Euro Football Championship instead. These are the traditional Tyree houses. They have small windows and very thick walls. This is a Reef Inn, a wonderful restaurant quite near Tyree Airport. It was previously the Beach Coma Cafe, but has had a complete revamp and now has a lovely atmosphere and serves very good food, much of it locally produced. Another thing to do on the island is take a tour of the Tyree Distillery. They produce excellent gin and have also started to make whiskey. Thank you.
Tesco. Notice that they spell Tairi the old way with a Y. The island's about 10 miles long and 5 miles wide, but somehow it feels bigger. When the sun comes out, the thing to do is walk along one of the numerous fantastic beaches. The surf wasn't up the week we visited, but Lindsay went swimming several times and eventually I managed to build up enough courage to join her. We also played a round of golf. To keep the greens in good shape, they built fences round them to stop the sheep getting on them. Tyree is also a very windy place. It was one day during our week on the island when the wind was so strong that we didn't feel safe cycling. But it's the scenery and beaches that are probably the main attraction. side of the island is Dunmore Broch, built 2,000 years ago and quite an impressive ruin. A couple of miles west of the Broch is what's known as the Ringing Stone. This is a big boulder which has moved during the Ice Age from the Isle of Rum. There are some cup marked indentations thought to have been carved more than 4,000 years ago by the Beaker people. And these give off a ringing tone when hit. This is the Ballino campsite where we stayed for a week. Then, all too soon, it was time to leave Tyree and catch the ferry back to Woburn on a nice calm day with a great sunset. 